All right, looks like I'm finally live. I'm really sorry about that. I need to uh, post this link on page for the people that support me there, uh, just because everybody can have easy access to this. And while everybody's filtering in, I would genuinely really appreciate it if you would share these links um, so I can get it out to more people. That would really be vastly appreciated. I'm uh, very sorry again about this whole debacle. I don't know what was going on. Uh, the camera wouldn't fire up for some reason. Again, bear with me for just uh, two seconds. If you're just filtering in, I want to post this link on Patreon. Clearly, it uh, is obvious that I don't do enough lives to figure out what's going on and what's causing these problems. So, um, yeah, I think I'm finally done. So, anyway, where is everybody from today? Oh, you got a mad echo. Let's see here. Let me see if I can get any better. I muted my uh, screen. Uh, okay, Chris is getting an echo. Anybody else getting an echo? Oh, Tristan, you missed the first comment. I'm so sorry. Anyone still getting an echo? Echo, echo. Um, yeah, we had uh, some clear issues going on uh, with, I don't know what's going on here. But I think we're working again. Indiana slowing me up a bit echoey. All right, hold on, echo there. Hmm, interesting. Might be better now that uh, I turned off my audio. So that way it's working all right. So, okay, great, excellent. Thank you, Chris. Cool. Uh, yeah, I see a lot of people starting to filter in. I appreciate it. If everyone would um, send and share this link in like their Facebook pages or whatever else that they may belong to, I'm posting a link right now in the uh, chat uh, for everybody to send it out. If uh, people are not watching this live, um, You'll basically be able to watch this and see the interactions. I'll do my best to uh, comment or say the question before I answer it. So it'd be a little bit better for you guys to watch uh, as you're watching after the actual live version. And if you have to leave in the middle of this live, you can always come back to it because it'll always be on my channel for you to, uh, to work with. So anyway, I appreciate everybody coming in for this impromptu live. Um, Heather is currently in, uh, I guess you would consider South Florida, doing some work stuff uh, for a little bit. So I, fig I got the evening, so I figured I might as well do a Facebook Live and have a good time with everybody. So uh, yeah, I just decided to do that. We have moved. As you can tell, the scenery is slightly or vastly different, actually. Um, we sold the house because the market is nuts and you know we want to be debt-free and do everything we can to possibly be debt free. So we are currently living in a uh, an RV uh, for the time being. As uh, we see a lot of my patrons and things like that, lots of familiar names commenting and everything. Excellent to see everybody around. I appreciate it. Like I said, so I'll start taking some questions. I didn't see any questions posted in the Discord server or my uh, Patreon page as an early. Uh, you know, questions in case people couldn't answer, although I didn't give very much, if at all, notice to this. So I decided, uh, yeah, we'll just start getting in. Yeah, excellent, Brian, awesome. So let's see here. We got, uh, what was the very first question? It was like, Nathan, uh, let's see. If you have an air length 29 and a half, do you choose the spine for the 30 or the 29? That's tough. Um, because say, for example, you choose the 30 inch or the 29, it doesn't matter, but you are say within that, because I think, um, and actually I think uh, I know this because I saw what people were commenting in my, no, my Discord server, uh, that the arrow charts are roughly a four pound increment. So if you're in that upper level of the four pounds, so say you're shooting 40 pounds and I have no idea what the actual arrow chart's broken down by, We'll just say hypothetically, it's broken down from 40 to 44 pounds and you're at 40. So you're on the low end. Well, then I would recommend going to 30 inches and referencing something on the higher end of your draw length or your arrow length. And then that way you can kind of find that happy medium. 
Now, if you're right in the middle, you got to plan. Do you do you plan on growing? Do you plan on getting stronger? If so, pick the stiffer arrow. If you would like to go down in weight, potentially pick that weaker arrow, meaning uh, stiffer arrow needed for the 30 and weaker for the 29. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, that, that'd be that answer. So hopefully that helps. Let's see. What else? Uh, Joe Keegan, what exercising can you do to steady your bow arm while shooting? Um, that one's a difficult question to answer because, you know, stability, you can do like planks, things like that, like single arm planks on the ground. Um, there's lots of little things you can do, but my concern is you're looking for a really steady sight picture, which, which isn't always the best thing. Uh, it's not something that's needed rather because uh, what you should really be focusing on is driving the tension and direction towards where you want the arrow to go, kind of letting that sight pin float and just kind of move and uh, you know, not really being too super hyper critical or hyper careful um, because if you aim too much, that can be a problem. Although if you're compound and you need a steady bow arm, then yeah, you need to do a whole lot of shoulder stability stuff, things like that. Or if, if actually, if I was you, I would do a lot of shoulder stability stuff. So yeah. Let's see here. So Chris Burgess has a question. Lots of talk about linear shot cycle has been going around. I just wanted to get your opinions on it. Why are Koreans using it and why is it so successful? So the question, it's a good question. Um, and there is, the, the real answer is there is no wrong way to shoot a bow. Uh, as long as they're shooting tens, as long as you're shooting tens, you're doing it the right way. Now, whether or not you can do that consistently and under pressure when needed is the real question, right? So, um, is the mic loud enough? By the way, I'm seeing the audio is relatively low. I can turn the gain up. So if you would like it slightly louder, please let me know. Um, the air conditioning is running, so it's it's kind of loud in here as it is. So I do the Koreans do it so six cells a day, depending on their development phase. And they don't get to even touch a bow for years uh, because they're learning the basic principles and the basic most important things of the shot cycle. So they do a very methodical way of, of teaching the sport. And as far as uh, Westerners are concerned, um, it's really not ideal to be taught that way. You know, you would never go to a Joe Ad club or go to any sort of archery range that is teaching new archers and then be, and their parents bring them, be like, I want my kid to shoot. I want to, you know, I want them to learn how to shoot or they want to learn how to shoot. Hopefully that's what they're saying rather. And, um, you know, in order for us to be like, okay, well, it's going to take three years before you're allowed to shoot an arrow. We're going to give you a stretch band. You're going to stand in front of a mirror six to eight hours a day and just do it, do it, do it. And, uh, you know, until then, this is your bow, a stretch band. And that's not going to work in the Western world. So, uh, because, you know, we're all about, unfortunately, instant gratification, instant satisfaction, things like that. So, um, it's tough. Now, is it successful? Is it possible to be successful with it? Absolutely, a thousand percent, yes. But um, according to Coach Lee and what he believes, and you know, it depends on what your opinion of him is. But you know, I take him uh, at face value. I take him at his word, and I take him uh, that way because of the experience and because of how involved he was at different levels of the word, right? Or not the word, but develop the program and then left and went elsewhere, right? So, um, you know, I think he's got firsthand knowledge, firsthand experience. So I trust him in, in that he says that it is and can be successful. It is a bit injury prone um, due to, you know, something like that, the high shoulder, impingement issues. However, it requires higher volumes of arrows uh, to be successful because of the smaller muscles, and you have to shoot those higher volumes of arrows from beginning the end of your career. Many times you will see like Koreans get on the national team and they're high school students or, or first year college students, freshmen, and they're used to shooting between 600 and 1,000 arrows a day. They get on the national team. Their training load goes to four to 500 arrows a day because that's kind of just what they work with, according to him. And then their performance fails because they're no longer shooting that high volume, right? So you see that happen a lot. 
within the archery community in, in Korea. And, and uh, yeah, a linear push-pull method is and can be accurate, but it requires a whole lot of work and a whole lot of effort. And, uh, you know, it's not a bad thing. It just is what it is. So, you know, I, I don't think there's a problem with it. I hope that answers that question. Um, it's kind of a lengthy answer and it's complicated. There's many levels to deal with. And, you know, I, I'm, I'll do my, I did my best to try to, try to get it to you that the straightest way I possibly could. So as far as why it's successful is because it's been around for forever. So many people have done it and um, not many people have their fingers in it trying to like morph and change it into something else or translate it uh, for lack of better terms. And that's why you get like weird things with the KSL shot cycle or the NTS system with that, that whole candy cane thing. It was, it, yeah, I just shake my head because it's not real. It's not right. And Technically, it's against the rules in a lot of competitions because it's kind of a side draw, which is drawing in an unsafe manner, which would be the same as a sky draw. So I don't know. I, I don't know. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm a bit peeved about that. I'm not quite sure. So as everybody's filtering in, I see more people are starting to come in. I appreciate it. Sorry about the issue uh, with the previous lives starting and stopping the uh, camera. I couldn't get to work. Um, I would genuinely appreciate it if anybody who's here would uh, share the link I just put in the chat stream uh, to get it out to more people. It's impromptu. It's a holiday weekend in the United States. So I don't know how many people will show up, but uh, again, Heather's out of town and uh, figured I'd do a live. Well, I got time to kill. So, And as questions are coming in, they kind of filter in relatively quickly and there's a lot of them. And uh, if I miss them, just comment again and I'll do my best to answer them. So let's see here. What do we got? Uh, James, James Burns got a question. My partner has a really short draw length, about 24 and a half inches, and is wondering what the important factors for picking limbs with that short of a draw length, especially for DFC. I'm assuming you mean draw force curves, uh, but at that short of draw length, I would say draw force curves kind of irrelevant. Just about every limb is going to feel relatively smooth, quote unquote, at about 24 and a half inch of draw length. Uh, best thing you can do is get a short limb, absolutely 100% a short limb. And if you can get a quality 23 inch riser, it would be of massive benefit for them, especially if they're going to try to shoot longer distances outside. Um, although string walking, maybe they would want a 25 inch riser. I, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, that's that's would be my my guess um, and suggestion as far as draw force and stuff like that. Not not really important at that shorter draw length because it's just very uh, very 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 short. So uh, Nathan, I have not shot the Velos XL limbs yet. Uh, working on that in the process of moving things that got crazy, and uh, that's next. The XL limbs on a 27 inch riser. 27 inch uh, exceed is next. So that's that's coming up as far as equipment testing. Uh, I've got some grips coming from uh, our core. So I uh, can't wait to get my hands on those. So that way I can happily shoot the bow without any sort of issue there. Let's see. Uh, Nate has a question. Do you have any advice on staying focused throughout the shot? Um, um, tough to say, in my opinion, it's easy to be fo focused because it really only takes about eight seconds. Now, if you're having issues focusing on the task at hand for eight seconds at a time, what you could really do is just starting to do things more in the lines of awareness uh, focus. So meaning like there's a lot of meditation, quote unquote, that has you focusing on your breathing. So you could, for example, put your hands on your stomach. I'm sorry about all the shaking. Everything is basically cardboard and foam in this place. So I, I apologize. Anyway, you can sit there with your hands on your stomach and feel, you can't see it right now. I mean, you could sit there and feel your hands raise and fall. 
focus on the rising and falling of your hands, okay? And focus on that. And as you sit there in quiet or in loud, it doesn't matter, focusing on your breathing, as you notice your thoughts start to go somewhere else, you're thinking about what you need to do instead of be doing this or what you should have done yesterday or tomorrow's workload or homework or whatever it is, acknowledge that your thoughts drifted, go back to the thought process of feeling, breathing, moving. And you focus on that, your thoughts drift, bring it back. Don't judge yourself, you don't need to be angry, just bring yourself back. It's part of training to be able to focus on something and one given thing for a certain period of time. Do it for a few minutes and try to keep going. You know, you'll know, you think about a lot of other things all the time. It's just part of what's going on and part of being human. So it's natural, uh, that can help some. So hopefully that helps. Oh, I like this one, Brian. What ideal, ideal pizza toppings and what kind of crust? Uh, I like regular crust, you know, the, the bubbly, the crust, the better, always, in my opinion. Um, you know, you gotta have nice, good dough. Uh, I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and I'm very partial to the pizza up there for whatever reason. It's like the water interacts with the yeast and, and the sugars in certain ways that makes it taste like nowhere else. Um, you know, you, you hear about like famous pizzerias that'll get truckloads of water shipped from New York City to California to do things like that. And it genuinely makes a difference. So hard to say there. Uh, but my favorite is just very basic toppings, uh, pepperoni and banana peppers the uh, pepperoni curling up and burning around the edges with a pool of grease in the middle and banana pepper spicy ones best way that's that's the way you got to have pizza in my opinion now you know paul <clears throat> fabian uh thanks for being a member by the way and same for you ryan i can genuinely appreciate uh, I appreciate your support, as well as all my patrons and people who are involved in helping and donating and allowing me to do this channel, you know, allowing me to do it more. I appreciate it. Pineapples, Byron, I, I like, I, I do like a Hawaiian pizza from time to time. That's for sure. But let's see, Fabian, how, how long do you hold on a gold while aiming in bare bow before releasing? When lifting the bow, would you say your arrow starts over the target? Or what is a good reference point to start? <clears throat> Uh, well, there's a multi-part question there. So how long do I hold on the gold while aiming? As long as it takes for my grip sear to go click, basically. Um, ideally, I would say two to three seconds. That would be my ideal time frame. But Barebo is so subjective and so individualistic. It's really impossible for me to say this is what you should do. However, I think within a two to three second time period, uh, it allows you to be able to focus without being distracted. And it also allows you to still shoot with peak levels of uh, strength without starting to, you know, lose that as you're holding for too long. Now, as far as uh, when I'm lifting the bow, would I say your arrow starts over the target? Um, yes, absolutely. I roughly, my shelf uh, probably flashes in front of the the gold as I'm going into setup position as I start to draw back. And like I've said in the bare bow form series specific in the setup position, I've noticed that I have to raise my bow arm much higher than Olympic style recurve uh, because of having no sight and using the arrows as a reference. So um, that that's where I would start. <clears throat> um, let's see here. Trying to find a good question here. Uh, Chris S. He's got a. He's new to archery, but having tried most styles, bare bow is his main focus. I've been learning with uh, clubs equipment, which is around twenty pounds. I'm going to buy your. You're going to buy your own bow, and I'm sure which poundage. Uh, honestly, so you're thirty two and you're five foot ten, so your draw length's probably similar to mine. I would. Um, I'd be. Cautious with going much higher than 20 pounds unless you feel like that is, like, you know, light as a feather. Um, lighter is always better to start with. <clears throat> so, you know, and you can always sell used light limbs relatively easily in my experience because so many people want to get into the sport. Now, as far as high-end limbs and high draw weight, it's a little harder to sell. Um, so, you know, starting with someone, something around 
that 20 pound range, if you were to like jump to 24 pound limbs and, and back them out all the way, you'd be right around that 20 pounds. So you wouldn't feel much of an increase, but then over time you could increase the limb bolts, uh, you know, screw them in, which would increase your draw weight and you could grow into them. So, and sorry, that's not easy as far as answering uh, and without really talking to you more, but that would be where I would start. <laughs> Stefan's got a question. Ever thought of going around the country in the RV giving archery lessons in clinics? Absolutely, 100%. Uh, I've done uh, some clinics or seminars or whatever you would call, uh, and I would love to do that more. And I would love to tie them into like sh uh, shoots as well. You know, I, my favorite game is field archery, and I would love to be able to shoot a lot more of that, especially in areas that it's you know, very challenging with extreme uphills and downhills because that's always a lot of fun. And I would love to tie that into seminars. So not just across the country, but across the world too. Um, now, as far as traveling with this unit here, this is uh, actually a, a destination RV as by all the windows. Um, you know, Florida is, uh, you know, heavily involved in recreational vehicle parks around here. So we figured we could live in this for a year to build our house and then, uh, you know, be able to sell it and recoup as much money as we could uh, as, as without losing it on the value, because this is a popular unit to park around here. So as far as dragging it around the country, not ideal, but about a year ago, uh, Heather and I did buy a really, really cool vintage RV that I cannot wait to actually fully renovate. Um, if some people don't know, but I do as a, my secondary job or my primary job at the moment is I restore and customize um, old vehicles. So right now I'm building a 66 Chevrolet C10 pickup and a full custom frame, everything from the ground up, all done in house. And we got a, a 71 Winnebago Chieftain, which is just, disgusting yet awesome looking and all the same aspects. So I can't wait to uh, make a resto mod RV one day and we'll probably drive that around the country and host seminars hopefully within the next couple of years. So I, I would love to do that. I'd love to go all over the country. I've never been to Hawaii, Alaska, places like that. Um, I would love to, to travel and uh, be able to share this more in person with people for sure. So again, as people are commenting, please keep commenting because the chat moves and uh, happily uh, pick theirs out as well. So thanks everyone for that support. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> so this is a good question. And I'll answer. Uh, Matino Legero. On your very first videos, and the bow smash me in the uh, every shot. Why did I do that? Um, or why did I stop? And actually it never, the stabilizer never actually hit me in the groin. It was hitting me on the inside of my rear thigh. Uh, it looked very close and never even once scared me because it was far enough away. Although the pants I was wearing were extremely baggy, uh, really uh, baggy windbreakers because it was winter time in February while we were recording those videos way back when in like 2006 when I first started this channel. Wish I would have continued it. Anyway, um, yeah, it doesn't, uh, it never even comes close to there. If it did, I would not let that happen. So hilarious question. Thanks for asking. Uh, uh, Lano, any thoughts on the new show Boya Ultima RC Pro site compared to the Excel sites? Honestly, don't know, haven't played with them, and, and don't, don't know what has changed, so I can't comment. Although I can tell that both companies do make a killer site. Um, you know, I've got mad respect for the people at Chaboya as well. Uh, always been very, very helpful in the archery community and a staple to many, many pro shooters, uh, in, in helping them out. So uh, as far as Excel sites, I know about them and you can't beat them, but I don't know about the newest stuff. So I can't, can't comment on that. I'm sorry. Uh, Levi, no, I did not get a chance to watch Team USA. I was busy packing and moving and then being very busy. So, uh, but mad props and congrats to them for earning full slots on both men and women's team. It's excellent. Let's see here. Tom Lynch. Uh, hey, Jake, I switched from compound to recurve in May with 30 pound limbs. Goal is to get up to about 45. How often should my weight increase at what increments and how do I know the right time? So, Tom, um, I can speak from experience and say that 
I, while living at, while living at the Olympic training center, once my form kind of got dialed in, I decided, uh, that I wanted to go up in bow weight at that time. I was somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 ish pounds, 38 to 42, somewhere in there. This was in 2006. So it's hard to remember exactly. But after I got the form down about a year later, I said, all right, I want to start increasing my bow weight. And because I shot super regularly and shot high volumes of arrows, I decided that I could just basically, what I did is I think it was once a week, I did like a half a turn increase on my limb bolts, on my tiller bolts, and just slowly took it up from there. Um, if I started noticing that I was struggling or shaking or having some issues, I'd stop for the next week and kind of delay that. And, you know, I went from 40 pounds to 53 pounds because we shot fetus at the time. So, you know, over 50 pounds was not needed, but very popular on the world scale. So uh, I probably got there within six to eight months or so for for reference, give or take. <clears throat> Jim, yeah, I agree. The, the Chieftain is uh, quite the unit uh, as far as uh, an old looking RV and uh, can't wait. We're gonna use, it's gonna be white and teal. It's gonna be pure white pigment uh, for the most part. And then the teal is going to be uh, based on it's the paint code is called tartan turquoise, and it's it comes from the late fifties GME Chevrolet lineup. Um, so it's got an old feel to it, and it it's going to look phenomenal. I can't wait. Uh, lots of plans for that. I'm excited, but just not enough time in the world. <laughs> uh, Octavio, do I have a new place to shoot? and the or a place to shoot in the new location absolutely yes um always has been since i was let's see i moved from new york uh western new york to florida when i was 17 or 18 obviously it wasn't me my parents moved and i followed but that was always a requirement uh having enough land enough uh of distance to shoot the furthest distance that i needed at the time it was 90 meters so we needed a long enough lot for that and that has never been not a requirement when traveling. So it always is a requirement. So yes, absolutely. We'll be shooting uh, outside here. Uh, as soon as I take a ratchet strap and ratchet my target back together and set it up and figure out where I'm going to put it and we'll be, I'll be shooting again. Thanks for the question. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Aragus, uh, how much benefit is gained switching from like 4.2 millimeter to 3.1 millimeter arrows helping with wind at long distance i don't know i don't have a quantifiable figure to be able to tell you um it's tough to say i've heard um from some people that i've i've uh been friends with that have gone down in bow weight because they've been working more and they went from X10s to ACEs with the, with the same FOC. And they actually found that they drifted less at lighter draw weights because they were faster. Um, so it's hard to say. Uh, I, I really don't know. And I don't know enough about aerodynamics and things like that to, to comment on that. I, I do have uh, some stuff I'm, I will be working on in the medium term future uh, that I'll know a lot more about aerodynamics and how that affects arrows, um, mostly in trajectory. But... Uh, I'll be able to know that a bit more in the future, but I'm, I can't help you. I'm, I'm sorry. No, I can't help you exactly, but I can tell you that skinnier is probably going to be better if it was apples to apples, the same weight, the same speed. Skinnier has got to be better. It's less cross section. And, you know, you could probably do figures on uh, actual, you know, take 4.2 millimeters times 30 inches versus uh, 3.1 millimeters times 30 inches, see the cross section, and then probably do some basic calculations on how much wind would drift, but it's hard to say. Uh, Pierce, um, uh, would I consider trying for another Olympics, Olympics at any point? Uh, I probably would consider it. Um, it would depend on a whole lot of factors. You know, as of right now, I just don't have the time to dedicate to that type of stuff. Uh, I could probably potentially do it more now. I, I can't say that. I can't say that I would do it more recreationally um, because I just don't think I'd be satisfied with performance if I didn't actually give it a go. I'm that kind of person and that kind of competitor. I have to be at my top 
uh, and give it my all and leave it all out on the range. Otherwise, I'm just not going to be satisfied. So uh, as far as taking it seriously, potentially, uh, it's just there's a lot more to life than going to the Olympics. And I've already done it. You know, um, I really loved it and I want to go back. But, um, you know, what makes me happy and satisfied and brings me joy um, uh, way more vast outside of just competing at a high level. But it is fun. Do not get me wrong. And there is a bit of me that wants to go again, for sure. <clears throat> Cohen, uh, yes, I would consider shooting a video at some point that explains my thoughts on target panic. Um, not sure how to dance around that subject yet because I genuinely have it really, really bad. However, I did find some uh, relief and I'm still working on it through the uh, shot IQ through Turner. Um, and because he's created a system that worked so well for me, uh, I defer to him um, because it is really helpful. Um, but I will at some point share my uh, struggles and successes and experience with that. I just need to talk to him about that and uh, basically get his blessing on whether or not I can use his material or, you know, referencing it is enough for him. I just, I don't want to upset and pirate other people's stuff um, without asking them. You know, I've asked Coach Lee about um, his method, if I can teach it and use it and educate people on it openly and freely like I do. And he was absolutely on board with it. So I got to get uh, Joel's blessing to be able to do something slightly different um, than what he's got. But I just, yeah, haven't, haven't crossed that yet. <clears throat> Let's see here. I'm trying to answer. There's lots of them filing in. Uh, oh, so Lano has got a question. So where am I moving now? Um, honestly, just kind of down the street, not much further, uh, in Florida, a little bit further out in the countryside, um, which I'm happy about. It's quieter. Uh, you can see more stars and a lot less people, even though there wasn't very many to begin with. It's just, uh, yeah, like, like hanging out and not being bothered at all. But as far as where, um, it's not very far and it just, Still loving being in Florida. Let's see here. Uh, Brent Allen's got a good question. Is there a deliberate coordinated movement to keep your draw shoulder down when raising my draw hand up into anchor your humerus while bringing the shoulder down or separate steps? Um, not really. I mean, yes, 